be looked after when you're older. Well, the whole mm-hmm. fucking shit was hitting the fan for all these wee pensioners who all their day did the right thing by putting money away in a wee pension and they get fucking shafted by the system. And they could see it. I spoke to pensioners, wee women with tears in their eyes who could count, could say, there's people who go in here, they get this and that. I always remember at start as day it's coming back to me flooding now, mate. It's funny how memories fucking do that when you trigger the bastards, mate. But I can remember a wee woman with tears in her fucking eye telling me the story of how she fucking did. And I, as I say, it's no, it wasn't just one person. It was it was countless times I'd fucking heard it. And I remember when the cunt came round to me, he came out this, and I remember, all right, and I tore strips out the cunt. I was like, hey, the fuck. I says, I'd rather fucking piss out my fucking thing when I don't get to use cunts because, like you said there, it's in the lap of the gods, you know what I mean? What's going to happen with that money? Where do you see it again? Because, but, because somebody's criminal. investing that money. Once you put that money away, somebody's investing it. And if that investment goes tits up, then where, where does it leave you? You know what I mean? I know. And then the thing You're is... You're under I mean, serious pressure. That, that wee woman and the, the ones who I spoke to, they would see people who hadn't worked all their days. They would turn around... And it wasn't fair, and the system wasn't fair, you know what I mean? But they could turn around and say, that person didn't work, and they got everything handed to them, and they still get mm-hmm. it, they get free everything, and they get, and they would be right. So, and then you yeah. think, well, what's the fucking point of working and busting your gut and paying all that, and then it gets, and the system's fucking done this way, so as it can actually drive people, so people who do the right thing, so as it... It drives them fucking crazy and drives them. It's just a sick fucking way. That they, they, and then the crazy oh. thing is, they turn, they turn the people that against each other. Instead of us getting together and seeing the last fight that's left, it's it's not about religion or fucking Catholic Protestant. It's not about anything other than well, sex. Is a fucking. It's, it's about the people who are controlling it. The less than one percent against the rest is, and it's how they control, and it's a mind control system and how they can keep us apart and keep us off fighting each other when we should be getting together and saying, hold on a fucking minute, we've got fuck all, and it could be a lot better, and it could be run a lot better and fairer if we did things this way, instead of being done done up like a kipper by these bastards, know what I mean? It's just so unfair, yeah. it's fucking unbelievable, mate. Well, I agree with you 100%, because um, I've always been blessed, so, you know, I used to think cursed, but now, now I think blessed, we are a very suspicious mind, you know what I mean? Bless and, me. uh, and you know, Curse as well, suppose I. <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to be you don't want to be led too easily, and I'm the one that's led too easily. And you think to yourself, you're right, you're saying do the best and, and put a wee bit away and put a wee bit. Fuck that! You know what? You know what's going to happen? This is time to come by because see guys like me, if I'm thirty guys, I'm going to go back to doing what the old school done fifty fucking year ago and put my money under the fucking mattress because at least you know where it is and at least you know it's safe, ain't you? Well, it's safe-ish if you've got an alarm in the face. You know what I mean? And I always so, looked at that age. I, I just thought that was always too far away to look. I mean, you're in your 20s. To think a 30-odd, 40 years away, you've not even lived that long. And they're asking mm-hmm. you to think beyond that. And I, I just took the conclusion, fuck it. I'm smoking that much dope, popping that much pills, fucking taking that much speed, mushies, fucking trips and everything. I'm going to be dead by the time I'm 30. But then that doesn't yeah. happen, you carry on, so you're just like, ah, fuck it. I'll take out a you're house, right. I'll take out a house right. and that'll be my pension. But I ended up ripping the fucking arse out of that, remortgage, 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 fuck it, I'm not paying it, I'm away, take it, shove it up your arse. And then back to square one. Fuck well, it. See, see the hang on, so I know what you're talking about, but I, I tend to think that fucking, I, I try, I'm, I, don't, I don't smoke, I take a drink, but I try to keep myself healthy, I try to keep myself fit. But, I'm agreeing with you. The Joe Bad A in particular, you're exposed to fuel. You're exposed to all the the, the uh, all, all the vapor, and the vapor is full of cancerogens. So you, you you know what I mean. They're already telling you that the two and one are going to get cancer in their lifetime. So right. the, the type of Joe Bad A and the amount of shit I'm breathing in, in, in four nights a week, uh, I don't think I've any cancer dodging fucking jacket answer. So you know that, that's what I think to myself. You know something. I'm losing guarantee PC60. So, what, what is the point in putting money into this pot that you want to get now when you think it's at 67 now and you're determined to get it? So, what's the point in paying out of that money when you might never fucking see it? Mm-hmm. You know, so I am. I'm just stunned. I was a young boy, I don't know when that Robert, uh, not Robert Murdoch is fucking that bastard, that Robert Maxwell, I, I, I can't remember. You remember, you remember, you remember, he died. What, what time was that? Was that the 90s? 
I can't mind exactly myself. I mean, I'm six years older than yourself, but I, it was probably when it fucking. They reckon that I reckon it was Mossad that killed him. It was Mossad. I'm sure I fucking remember watching a documentary and I heard somebody talking about it. But I, it, it fucking. It would be the well, what, late eighties, early nineties. I would say. I has it. Oh been no, years. no, it wasn't eighties, man. It wasn't eighties. Fuck, I was young. I would. I can't remember. I'm sure the eighties are fucking eighteen eighty eight. Being sure part of my dad. But um, <laughs> what well, my point was, my point was that was that uh, that was actually kind of cut me off tensions because I understood then what had happened. That fat bastard that ran away with cunt's money, you know. And, and so, listen, can I change the subject quickly? Right. You just mentioned the 80s, yeah, right? Remember the 80s? Andy Walker, I was away and I loved Andy Walker. The 1988 season, I was there that day. I was sitting on the fucking red ash. Remember when they put the, 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 the crash barrier up? Me and my brother were being in the red ash. My dad decided to run track at Celtic Park. And Andy Walker, I loved him. How much, yeah? Oh, a wee prick is he, man. You see, he is... I, I see the shit he, he says it's because when I listen to him right I liked him as well I mean for me I love him he was my hero as a, as, a, as a young young boy 10, 11, 12 he was my fucking hero Andy Walker Jesus Christ well see and for me I was 16 so I was I was burned and scorned by Charlie Nicholas and then Judas himself before he came back and did the mm. dirty again but by that yeah. time it was three times down the line so I, I'd looked at Andy Walker I I thought, well, he's going to leave us anyway, so I wasn't too much invested in him. I was probably, Andy Walker for you was, well, check, was my Charlie Nicholas, because that was about the age I was, aye, I was about aye, 10. But, but I think, anyway, to answer that, then I would say it's because he's working in the media and he's mm-hmm, a clever guy mm-hmm. and he knows the way it is and the way he talks, right? You can hear him, he, he, he thinks things out and he talks things through, he thinks logically. And so I'm just thinking he, he knows the way the thing's set up that. The only way you can get on in this game is to uh, no attack Rangers or Sevco mm-hmm. and, and, and tow the party line and at certain stages uh, be a wee bit critical of Celtic and I think he but knows and I think he knows he, 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 he tries to for what I've, like when I listen to him it's like he's walking through a minefield and he's tiptoeing through it and he tries to do it uh, without exploding or the Huns exploding on him, that's what it is. It's it's like he doesn't mm-hmm. want to upset a Hun, but and he, and he treads on the border where he knows that well he's a Celtic fan, and he knows he's got Celtic mates out there probably, and all the Celtic fans listening to him, but he can't do anything about it because if he wants to take a coin or do that media shit, then that's the that's if that's a, his bargain. That's his, that's what he's got to accept. He's got to accept it. He, he can't he can't mind fuck the Huns. I mean, if he was to go in there and mind fuck the Huns, the, his his boss would be like, "What are you doing? They're our core audience. You can't fucking. They're all mm-hmm. complaining. You're fucking. The wee lassie here's fucking. He's melted. Lorraine Herbison's fucking doing her nut because her juniors are getting fucking a hundred calls for all the bears. The bears are gone mad because this cunt is fucking said this and that. I mean, if he was to go on and say, oh, they're a new club, or whatever, I don't even know what he said, right, but I can half imagine what he's fucking, he'll be towing the party line and he can't he, say he, it. I mean, have he, has he been on Tommy, slide? Is, is, is it, wait, wait, no, tell us when he was on caller. When was he on? What did he say, caller? Tommy, I don't listen to slide, mate. I don't listen to that shit. I'm, but I'm just talking about in general. In general, because he was like, my first hero, my first Celtic hero, Obviously, I'm a fucking hero, right? He's my first Celtic hero. Why is he half? I get fucking Charlie Nicholas here spouting merch shite. Well, who's worse, Charlie Nicholas or fucking Andy Walk? I think the reach, reach, reach. Honestly, mate, I think I think I think Charlie Nicholas gets away with it more because he's on Sky. But the the point was, I'm sorry for changing the subject on you there. Oh, don't be silly for that, mate. But um, what I was getting onto was, and for me, it all comes down to the one thing. There's guys, there's great guys like Tom Boyd out there who kind of get a gig with the media and yet I listen to his interview with the, where, the, where it's at home. It's not it's E-Tims, I listen to him with E-Tims or a night on the, on, the, on the download. Fantastic wee show. And it all comes into the one thing, mate, that we've got to just keep like, pushing our own media and fuck this mainstream pish, fuck this Radio Clyde and do our own thing and all the brothers, all the sisters can all come together or the ex it's just a pity. I remember you were trying to get the king, a king's own there, and he didn't seem to want to be playing ball with you. I'm but sad see if you could start. 
that was that was a bit shot shoddy, shoddy. I remember meeting him by the way, um, and I don't like to speak to him when I was when I was a, when I was when he was he wasn't even he wasn't the king of kings at the time. He was. I'll tell you what, I've got a picture up the stairs, Tommy, and me fucking. I'm going to tweet it to you. I fucking find it for the, one of the newspapers. I was remember the time of the bonus row at Celtic Park. Remember the bonus oh. row. I was fucking screaming at the fucking the, the, the bus in the way out because they'd come out from inside the stadium. I can't even remember what year it is. You've seen it. Reggie Blinker was there. It must be 1998 or something. And I was fucking screaming at the bus because I was shouting at that bastard Blinker because he was the one of the worst shite bags I've ever seen in a Celtic jersey. And I've got that picture up the stairs. I'm going to try and find it before I go to my bed and I'll tweet you a picture. And uh, my point was, what was my, what was my point? Hi. Um, awesome. And, the King of Kings, I met him around about that time. So it would have been about 98, wasn't it? Aye, it would have been 98, 99. Aye, 98, 99. And do you know what? I met him outside Celtic Park and he was a, oh, he was a cold fish. He wasn't, you know what I mean? He was all the way through it. Many, I'd heard the other people saying that as well, that tried oh, a lot of grass oh, from him, we'd always sting me a normal. I'd asked him, I'd asked him about, can you sign that to Liam, please? And he was kind of, to, 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 to who? But you know, he, he never done anything. I remember coming to him and I thought, he was a nice guy, and I was disappointed because that time he got him on the phone, told me he sounded brand new, sounded bang on. I'm thinking he's going to be the business here. And I was choking and every I, night. And I, I counted up, mate. I'd fucking, I'd, I'd only fucking two minutes, minutes and he called me. Two minutes, oh, and he was fuck. And, and here, you know, I, I picked up by Johan Malby. Picked up Johan Malby, and uh, this was when was this? This was before the the Caragandi game. I guess it was a week before the Caragandi. That's when I picked him up. Aye, I heard you talking about that on the show. I heard you mentioning him in the motor. Aye, and even phoned him up, and he did the same thing. But when I had him in the motor, I was like, "Here, tell Henrik I'm the mad cunt fucking phoning him." And then I, I was like, "Tell him I'm the cunt that got a fucking zombie the sack and fucking hang me." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I should have said to him, I should have said Henrik might score the goals against the fucking zombies, but I was the one that got them the fucking sack." <laughs> How do, how do you find these guys when you buy into them, these Celtic people, if you vote them in, when you're a taxi? And how did you find them? Did you, did you, did you declare yourself? Uh, only well, you only on the odd occasion. Only on the odd occasion. Oh, for aye, for the, the players, a couple of times I did, aye, aye. But a lot of the... Well, aye. So, look, to me, I remember doing it to that wee fucking hang me. But okay, well, a lot of the time... And then one of them fucking... One of them knows me. I mean, a couple of them know me through fucking. I've just picked them up. I mean, I just, I try, I just like the way I treat people, mate. I just treat everybody the same, mate. I mean, just I treat people how I want to be treated myself. Just look for a bit of respect and give me a bit of respect, and then just fucking. Absolutely. You go, it goes a long way, know what I mean? So just fucking, and especially see when you're dealing with people. And I, I, being a salesman, I always well, you, try, you need to try and communicate all levels, and that that's what my yeah. I, I try to train. You know what I mean, just to. To be able to do that and not have a fear, not having a fear of talking to somebody because they're a fucking sir or a, a major or a fucking... I mean, everybody's the same, and especially when you're dealing with people who have... Well, they've got a bit of an ego or they've got money or they're fucking... I mean, football players especially, I mean, they might think they're a ticket. I mean, fuck them. They're, they're only a person, aren't they? They're only a person. It's not for you or me, mate. Aye, and, and, I, and I, I've never ever went and went to get an autograph or, or deal like that to anybody. Well, I think I probably like my ass and autographs, but never in the, the situation where I just, I just treat them until I'm in a position where they're fucking, then maybe I might have asked, but it'd only be once or twice. But I've never really, I don't think I have asked for them any autographs for Celtic players. I don't think, no, I'm fucking. I, I don't remember, get them I remember an one story when I was in, in a nightclub when I was working in the one across for that sugar cube, it was called Archaos, it used to be, and I was working right. in there, and uh, I was working as a toilet attendant. Selling flowers and fucking aftershave, I kid you not. Yes. And uh, and who came into the toilet? It was we Simon Donnelly. Right. And then fucking and all these boys used to be. We used to have football conversations and all that. People were bringing me drink. It was way back fucking. This was back ninety six, ninety five, like ninety five, ninety six. Mm -hmm. And I remember Simon Donnelly came in. It was remember it was our first season back at Paradise, and fucking mm -hmm. Simon Aye. Donnelly came Aye. in, and I went like, ah, here, give you an autograph, my man, and he signed it. And I went like that. Oh, what's that? Oh, fuck it. Charlie Muller. I thought you were Charlie Muller. Who's this? Who are you? Like, I'm Simon <laughs> Donnelly. He's like, oh, who? He's like, ah. and then fuck it. There was another cunt that was in there. It was actually a, a blue nose came in. He bought me a drink. He went, you're some mad cunt. I like you. He's like, I can't yeah. believe you did that to your own fucking player. 
I was like, so fuck, what do you mean one player? He's just a fucking, somebody comes in, I think,